Hey, are you interested in Orca Slicer scarf seams but don't know where to start? Why well, have you covered? So let's go ahead and take a look. With the last couple releases of Orca Slicer, one of the newer features is called scarf seams. And if you're like me, you probably didn't know where to start with this feature. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to figure out some basic settings you can use to set up scarf seams. And this will give you a starting point as you do some tuning and work on your printers to have the best looking seams possible. Start off, let's do a little bit of a discussion as to what scarf seams are. So scarf seams are actually a feature that's used in woodworking. And basically it's joining two pieces of wood. If we look at this image right here, you'll see how it's an angled cut. And these two angled cuts are merged together to make one piece of wood. So again, you're, you're using basically an angled cut and this basically hides the seam. So it makes the seam harder to detect when you merge them together at these angles. Now, in the case of 3D printing, a feature that was developed by the community in Orca Slicer is, again, a scarf seam. So instead of a traditional seam where you have an opening in a circle, let me show you that. So here's a picture of a seam. Basically, the extruder starts, let's say, at this point goes around, stops, goes to the next layer. And traditionally, you'll have all these seams lined up. If you don't do the seams lined up, then you'll have pimpling all over your print. So usually I do all the seams lined up. Now with scarf seams, the slicer is actually trying to taper off the filament and then create that seem very similar to what they have in woodworking. The idea is to hide that seam. Now there's numerous channels out there that have covered this better than I have. Teaching Tech, and that's mentioned in this article, does a great video. In this video, I'm just gonna show you what settings I started with. And I guess what kicked things off for me is this great post on printables. And scrolling down through, there's some settings they try here and they have little test models, and they try all sorts of different tests to create the ideal scarf seam. In this video, all that I'm going to do is start putting in some of these settings, and then we can talk about, hey, this is a start for your print, and then you can start tuning from there, try to hide the seams as best as possible. What I'm going to do is let me line up everything on my screen here so we can see both the slicer and then this article, and then we'll see what we can set up. Now on the left-hand side of my screen, I have Orca Slicer right-hand side, the article. And let's just look at how I set this up. So I used the models in this article to do my testing. The model on the right-hand side is just my standard settings. The model on the left-hand side is my model with these new seam settings. So let's take a look at what settings you should start with. Again, start leveraging these scarf seams. One of the first things I did was I changed my line widths from 0.5, which is what I traditionally do, down to 0.45, basically just to give a little bit more of a difference. And then one of the recommendations here, let's go over speed, is to slow down the outer wall. So I slowed it down by approximately 20%. So slow down the outer wall speed. Again, about 20, 20%, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. You want to play around with this, but I'd start probably at 20%. So you want to slow down the outer wall. And again, looking at the article, our next thing is we want a little bit wider width on our outer wall. So if we look here on my outer wall, all my other walls are 0.45, my outer wall is 0.6. So 
So that's again to help us change and to help us hide that scene. Scrolling down, I'm going down to the wall print order and I changed it from my default, which I typically do outer and then inner. The new setting I'm going to use is inner, outer, inner, and use that to set up and basically try to hide these seams. Now, the other thing it mentions is extrusion rate smoothing, and that took me a, a little bit to figure that out. And we're gonna go over to speed, scroll down, and we're going to advanced. And basically to figure this out, what I did was I clicked on extrusion rate smoothing, opened up the article on Orca Slicer's Wiki, and I just scrolled down, and instead of doing the equations, I just looked at the little chart they have here. And so I went with a line width, I'm just going to say I'm using 0.45, I have layer height for me is a little bit bigger than this, it's 0.2. And I just looked at this. They recommend doing 60 to 80% of these numbers. So I just went with the high number, 500 acceleration, 500 millimeters per second squared acceleration. I just went with 25 millimeters and put that in. So that's for both models. And let's keep looking at what I used. Now I kept scrolling down. It left my number of walls as three i changed the to classic mode or so if you keep scrolling down the article there are some settings you can do for overhangs my number of walls inner and outer walls i did three so i'm leaving that as is it suggests for bridging and overhangs do classic mode that's under speed and if i scroll down i check the box for classic mode they suggest possibly using staggered inner seams. So if I go back over to quality, I've checked the box for staggered inner suite seams. They suggest and recommend using conditional scarf joint. Check that. It's again under quality. Changed it to contour and hold. I did scarf around the entire wall. I left my scarf length at the default, which is 20 millimeters. My scarf steps, although we, in this article, Adam L doesn't say there's any change, I bumped it to match his up to 20. And then the scarf, scarf ratio, I just left that as is. So those are the settings I changed. And I went ahead and printed these models. Again, this model on the, on the right, is my normal settings model on the left is with these new scarf settings. So let's move over to my desk camera and just take a look at the results. Now I'm gonna mention these aren't perfect, but the reason why I'm showing you these settings is this gives you a starting point of where how to experiment. So here are my models that don't have scarf seams turned on. And you can see this seam is very prominent you can't really see it on this model because it's doing the seam on a corner. So that's fine. I'm actually, that's okay. And then this little circle, you can see the seam really well there. So that's my normal print settings. And you can see the seams. Now, if I switch over to here, to my models where I use these new seam settings, on this circle, I can't see the seam at all. And I've gone around this thing like half a dozen times, and I just can't see it. So I'm not seeing the seam at all. So this is really, really excellent. And this model, it's doing it on a corner. I really don't care because it's hard to see anyway. So I'm just going to put that aside. And then on this piece, let's find the seam. The seam is right in here. And you can see it just a tiny little bit up here maybe a tiny little bit in here. So this is really good. So I think these basic settings I've shown you are a great place to start. 
So that way you could figure out how scarf seams could work best for you and your printer. Now, real quickly, I just want to take a look at one other thing before I let you go. To switch it back to Orca Slicer, here's my normal print with my regular settings. That's 43 minutes, 10 seconds. And then let's take a look at that same print with the new scarf seam settings. And so that's one hour, four minutes. So with those changes in speed and whatnot, I've added close to 20 minutes to this print, about 17 minutes. So I think the way you need to look at scarf seams is if you need quality over speed, I think I'd go ahead and use them. And I'm pretty sure in all my prints moving forward, I'm going to play around with these settings some more and tune this for all my printers, and then just leave those scarf seam settings on for every print I do moving forward, even though it's going to add some time. Well, hopefully you found this helpful. This is a great place to start for what settings you need to change. And again, take a look at that post by Adam L. I'll link that below in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.